A while back I posted a sort of a preliminary video of a variable speed drive system that I was putting on my drill press. And I had it hooked up temporarily and everything and I promised that I'd do a, a follow-up once I got the, the whole thing set up. So uh, here we go. So this is a standard um, 16 and a half inch uh, 17-901C I think it is Delta 16 and a half inch drill press. Your run of the mill Chinese Delta drill press that I got off classifieds for about 200 bucks. And I had it for a while, and, it, and you know, it drills nice holes and everything, it's a nice drill press. Um, uh, but uh, changing speeds is always a pain on these things because of the double belts and, and you know, the fact that there's the either pulley in the middle and the belts are in the wrong orientation, you gotta take them both off and everything. So consequently I used to run this thing at sort of one RPM and left it there, kind of a thousand RPM and and not always the optimum speed depending on what it was uh, that I was using like a large Forstner bit, you know, it'd be too fast and uh, you know end up burning the wood and stuff. And for smaller bits it'd be a bit too slow and get a bit more tear out than you'd expect. And you know I live with all that. But uh, I got this idea after watching a couple of YouTube videos and some guys had already done this sort of project. That, you know, it wouldn't be that hard to convert this thing to a variable speed. And given how cheap VFDs have become, uh, sort of practical. So I kept my eyes out on the local classifieds and I found a one horsepower three phase motor for sale for $75. And it's the same frame size as the motor that came off the drill press, a single phase one. So it was a really easy fix. It took me literally 15 minutes to change the motor around. Uh, and once that motor was on, uh, I removed the idler pulley uh, from the middle there, and this thing right here. So that no longer exists, so now there's one belt, not two. And to get um, some sensible speed ranges, I actually had to flip, when I did the changeover for the drive pulley, I actually had to flip that upside down. So I have four different speed ranges. I find that this one here, which is a zero to 1800 RPM range with the variable speed drive I have on it now is a it's a good range that covers just about everything I need to do um, so the way it's set up is um, the VFD is is mounted down below uh, screwed up against the cabinet and it, it uh, has a 115, 115 volt single phase input uh, which I run through a main sort of master power switch here on the bottom. So when I turn that on, that sort of energizes the VFD. And the VFD is what supplies the power to this tachometer that I've installed. I got all these bits and bobs off uh, off eBay from China for dirt cheap. Uh, and anyway, um, ran a couple of control cables as you saw, saw when I had it open there, two brown ones. You can see they're two five conductor 18 control cables. And I bought a tachometer kit off eBay that has a display that I cut out a hole in the in the cover there and then mounted the tack and kind of got the wires all bundled up here for it. The tack is a, a magnetic pickup right here. I drilled the hole up through there and put the uh, uh, the hall probe, magnetic hall probe up through there and there's a magnet that's epoxied on the underside of the uh, of the uh, driven pulley here. And I don't know if you can see it or not but it's right up underneath. And every time it goes over the hall probe uh, you can see that hall probe little red light flashes so it counts the pulses and that's how you get your RPM. This hall probe tachometer kit cost twelve dollars, which included shipping. Unreal. So now that we've got sort of master power on, uh, we can hit start button. And the drill press will wind up. Right now it's five hundred and thirty-nine RPM. I can slow that way down it'll just about stop. So also on this pulley I can get down to about 150 RPM before it just decides that's slow enough. It's pretty slow. That's, you know, around 200 is about as slow as you'll want to go, let's say with a big Forstner bit or something. And I've actually uh, drilled some holes here with a big Forstner bit at this speed and it works pretty well. I can show a little demonstration of that later. Uh, I've got the motor set up to run from 0 to 100 Hertz, which gives me a speed range on this pulley up to 1800 RPM. So the motor, uh, uh, small you know, uh, NEMA frame motors like this are designed to run uh, at twice the rate of frequency. So uh, that would be 120 Hertz. I just cut it a little short. 100 Hertz is fast enough. Um, so the, the potentiometer again I got that off eBay and that's how I adjust the speed. 
and just because I could, I uh, put a reversing switch in. I don't know when I'll ever use that, maybe a sanding drum or something, or um, you know, maybe on the real slow speed you could you potentially use it for tapping holes where you, you know, go forward, back, forward, back, you know, clear out cuttings and so on. And it, and it goes slow enough on the low, the, low, the low belt range that you could actually do that. And, uh, I'll do a demonstration of how slow it can actually go uh, a little later on in the video. So the drive, <clears throat> the drive is a Tico, uh, one horsepower, single phase 115 input, 230 volt, three phase output. Now, um, Got it off eBay. It was uh, you know 160 bucks US plus shipping to Canada here. Canadian dollars is a little over, I don't know, 205 dollars or something. Just everything up right to the door. So very small. If you want to see it relative to my hand, it's about five inches high, five inches deep, and about three inches wide. Quite small. I just screwed it to the back of this cabinet I got up against the column of the drill press, and you put a little dust cover over top of it. Just keep debris off it. Uh, probably not a Probably not, you know, industrial quality installation, but certainly good enough for anything I'm doing. For those of you that don't know about Tico, Tico stands for Taiwan Electric Company. And they're a very large uh, corporation that actually bought Westinghouse uh, in North America. As a matter of fact, I've been to their motor factory, Tico Westinghouse Motor Factory in Taiwan, um, as part of my work, and uh, to look at some 3,000 horsepower motors they were building for us. And, uh, you know, Tico is not a fly-by-night outfit, so this, this drive is an industrial quality, uh, high-performance drive, even though it is a, a little guy. Uh, still good and cheap, uh, and uh, amazing performance. So, uh, that's about it. Um, super happy with it. Uh, let's drill a few holes. This is a 2 and one eighth of an inch Forstner bit. And I'm going to try to drill a hole into this piece of quarter sawn white oak. And according to my wood magazine speed chart, uh, for this sort of operation in hardwood, I should be running this bit at about 250 RPM. So with a top speed of 1800 RPM, I'm going to crank this down all the way to 250. So that's going to be quite a, a turn down in speed. So the concern would be, you know, do you have enough torque to actually drill the hole? So let's just see. Okay, so I've got this all sort of blocked in here with the fence and the hole down so I can hold the camera with one hand and run the lever with the other. And we'll press the start button. So right, now, right now I'm sort of 900, so I would turn this down until I get about 250. There we are. Now, there's a quick way for me to do this. Um, before I put the tachometer on, I uh, put a little um, indicator around the outside of the... It's actually a peel and stick from a DVD label kit. Um, anyway, and I, judging by the frequency output on the drive, I could estimate what the speed would be when it's on any given notch. So each notch is about 250, so that'd be 250, the red one's 500, 750, 1000, and so on. So I could have just, before I even turned it on, just come and sort of put it there around 250, and then when I turn on the drill press, you know, 280. I did a little high there, so I can just tweak it down to 250. Right about there. Okay, now let's just see if we can drill the hole. While I'm drilling, the RPM actually went up a little bit to 280. The uh, torque boost control on the VFD actually is giving it a little bit extra juice. That's probably deep enough, just about through. Now I can shut it off. And clear that out of the way. So that's, that's a pretty clean hole, it's not too fast, no burning, I almost went right through there, I just held off a little bit, didn't want to put a big hole in my, uh, my insert with this test cut, but I don't really know how you'd want any better performance than that, I mean, and a high speed performance with the smaller bits is no brainer, that just flies right through. 
So uh, all in all, I, I would call this a very successful upgrade. Bit unnecessary. I mean, I was drilling holes okay, but just the ease at which I change speeds now, I just find that I, I, I'll go and pick the right speed for the bit that I'm using as opposed to trying to make do with some intermediate speed that I just happen to be on because it's such a hassle to change belts. I'll never change belts again. Um, unless I'm doing something pretty special. So what I'm going to do for the next demonstration is I'm going to move the belt down to the very last lowest speed range and just show you how slow this thing can go. So super easy to change belts now, just the one belt without the idler pulley. So I've got it down at its really low range, which means slow speed, high torque. And I'll just turn it up to maximum right now to 100 hertz to show you what the, the maximum speed would be I get out of this thing. So in this range I get about 770 RPM at 100 hertz. But I can slow this thing down. The belt's making a bit of a creaking noise there. I'm not sure what that is. That might wear itself out after a while. But I can turn this thing down to... So the minimum I can go is right there. And that's somewhere around 40 RPM. I, I don't think the tachometer is that accurate when you're going that slow. But you can reverse it and forward it and reverse it and forward it. And the question is, do you have any torque? So if I grab a hold of this thing and I try to grip that, there's no freaking way I can even come close. If I grab a hold of it, speed doesn't even change in notch. So I mean, what do you want to do this slow? I don't know, maybe metal work, tap a hole, through hole or something with a, a tap through some aluminum or steel if you want a precision hole. Couldn't do it with a bottoming tap or anything, it would just crack off when it got to the bottom, but a through tap you could probably get away with. And uh, with the reversing feature, you know, you tap in and back out for the cuttings and then in you go again. And I don't know how they ever use it for that, but you know, for 50 cents, basically what it cost for that little rocker switch, I had the control cable anyway. Just threw it in, way to go. So, that's it. Thanks for watching. I uh, hope somebody found this interesting and that you're inspired to soup up your drill press.